next video I want to cover something called uh, Bode's Law and how it applies um, to the basic geometry of the Vesica Pisces as well as uh, Pythagorean uh, tuning scales, especially C. Now if we go to the uh, world book, um, this is where I first heard uh, Bode's Bode's, laws met, Bode's Law mentioned, and uh, Bode's Law is a scheme for representing the approximate distances of the planets from the Sun. The concept was devised in 1766 by Johann T. Titius, a German mathematician, before the discovery of the planets Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. The German astronomer Johann E. Bode published the law in 1772 and it became associated with his name. Bode's law operates according to a simple formula. Take the numbers 0, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, 192, 3, 8, 4, and 7, 6, 8. I'll write these in because um, these follow on. Also, we have. Uh, sorry, I like said uh, C, I mean the G. Um, Three, eight, four, and seven, six, eight. So focusing on G, three, six, twelve, twenty-four, forty-eight, ninety-six, one, ninety-two. Take the numbers zero, three, six, twelve, twenty-four, forty-eight, ninety-six, one, ninety-two, three hundred eighty-four, and seven hundred and sixty-eight. Each figure in the series after three is obtained by doubling the preceding figure. Add 4 to every number and then divide each sum by 10. In the table below we'll see um, uh, just how well this works as well as where it doesn't work. But um, the inconsistencies are actually um, uh, work well with the reality of the solar system. And so let's just get stuck into it and we'll begin. Now, uh, I'll do, and while I'm going, I'll do a illustration as well. Just okay. So what? Basically, here I'm gonna just to help. Okay. So this is the sun, and what Bode's law does, um, what is in a very accurate way describe whether planets are in r relation to the sun. Um, Kepler's free laws goes a lot, a uh, long way to explaining um, elliptical orbits, uh, equal areas in orbits, and the um, and how the uh, um, pardon me the rotation um, periods of there. But I won't go into Kepler's free laws now. That's but if you're interested, Kepler's free laws. It's a good um, some basics to understand with now. So we have the sun, and what I'm going to do is draw a 28 centimetre line. Uh, it could be, it doesn't have to be centimetres, but just 28 units. And, and I want to mark 4, 7, 10, 16, and 28. So now we have okay. So how does this apply to the planets? Let's begin just with the basics of of geometry. Now everything comes out of the circle. So here we have. One, the circle, the circle has zero corners. We go to the next construction and we're going to do a Vesica Pisces. Okay, uh, I should have done the construction line, but what we have now is out of the Vesica Pisces. Now we have an equilateral triangle, which is 
three points, one, two, three. Uh, you could do the same construction with a vesica, but I'll just, there's a, just to illustrate it, I'll show how it grows. So we're going to do a vesica Pisces. And then I want to extend it one more circle down, sometimes called a double vesica Pisces. Now we have one, two, three. And also one, two, three. So now we have two interlocked equilateral triangles. Uh, most people know as the Star of David or a hexagon essentially. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we have six pointed star or a six pointed polygon. Now, okay, I'm going to draw, uh, now as the Vesica Pisces grows, the next construction will be um, the seed of life. And so I've drawn a Vesica pipe. Now, wherever two circles intersect, that's where we put our point. Intersect again, just the point intersects. Um, we have what's called the seed of life. Seven circles or six uh, around the core. We also have our hexagon, which would give us our Star of David also. But we also now have these six points, which bisect the hexagon. So I'm going to circle around. I'm going to enclose this in a circle just to. So, as I mentioned, we have one, two, three, four, five, six points of a hexagon, plus one, two, three, four, five, six points. This now gives us a free hand with. So, if we draw. So, now we have. 12, 12 points and from this we can create a 12 pointed star and it's a series of equilateral triangles color to make it a bit easier to visualize Now we have a 12 pointed star and just to save time now um, I would draw this again to create a 24 pointed star but I don't want to uh, draw all of that. It's um, where these points intersect so we're bisecting the 12 pointed star and from that you would create your 24 pointed star. So to go back to uh, G, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, so from the circle, the triangle, star of David, 12 sided, 12 pointed star, 24, the next would be 48, 96, 192. So here we have how out of the um, geometry, uh, fundamental constructions, we start to get uh, this pattern. Tuning, G, geometry, as with all these, as with what's all interrelated. Uh, 2,160 miles is the equatorial diameter of the moon within 99.4%. 864,000 miles is the equatorial diameter of the sun within 99. Now in other units as well. So these are basically the, the core numbers in esoteric design esoteric symbolism and uh, architecture now. So, we're going back to Bode's Law to explain how this geometry actually seems to describe 
the distances uh, that planets are from the sun and from each other. Um, but this, this is one of the um, outstanding questions in astronomy and um, only in recent times has it been reborn with um, uh, planet hunters. Uh, try, they're now using this principle to find the Goldilocks zone to find inhabitable, pl in, inhabitable planets in other solar systems. So here we have Mercury. Venus, Earth, Mars, <clears throat> pardon me, and it's, it's for now I'm going to call it Planet X. Now, Bode's Law is very simple. We have 0, 3, 6, 12, 24. 0, the circle, represents Mercury and we just, So we begin 0. And we've, this is how simple Bode's Law is. You start with your number, plus 4 over 10 equals 0 0.4. I mentioned the 28 um, unit line here. And well, now before I go on, I should describe what a AU is or an astronomical unit. Um, that's one of the measurements astronomers use. Now, one. AU, astronomical unit, is equal to the average distance of Earth to Sun. Earth to Sun, and that turns out to be uh, just under 150, 150 million kilometres. The exact number is 149597. Eight, seven, one kilometers. So one AU is one astronomical unit for Earth to the Sun. So this distance here from Sun to Earth is one AU. So I've meant okay. So Mercury is zero plus four over ten, zero point four. Um, now, Venus, the next is the equilateral triangle, three-sided poly, so we're going to do the same. Now, instead of zero, we're going to add three plus four over ten equals zero point seven. Earth, the six-pointed star, six plus four equals ten, over ten equals one. One astronomical unit. Earth is the defining um, planet here. So the next planet would be Mars, which is a 12-pointed. So 12 plus 4 over 10 equals 1.6. 1.6. And the next planet X would actually be Ceres, or the asteroid belt. So that's 24 plus 4 over 10 equals 2.8 okay now I'm only doing the inner planets the next one would be Saturn and uh, Jupiter and, and so on but uh, once this, now here we see the um, planets and we also have their uh, so how far is Earth to Mercury, because of the elliptical orbits, all of the planets are actually wobbling in and out a little bit. There's, it's a matter of when you measure, not really how far. So, they, however, Mercury does pass right through here. Um, orbit of Mercury is zero point three zero seven to zero point four six six AU. So Mercury passes right through this sweet spot. Venus. The closest that Venus gets to the Sun is 0 0.718. Venus actually sits outside of Bode's Law. However, 
Venus is the only planet which revolves in the opposite direction to all the others. The general consensus is, is that there was some sort of cataclysmic event which shifted uh, the um, rotation direction of Venus. This will should account for this discrepancy here. Next one is Earth. Earth by definition is 1 AU and, and uh, between 0 0.98 to 1.02 1 So again Earth fits beautifully into the pattern. Mars 1.6. Mars is 1.6 AU moves again through that cycle um, Mars is about 1.38 to 1.66 AU and um, very interesting. So Mars coincidentally will move through 1.61 AU. Now when um, uh, Johann Tidius, the guy to first invent it and Bode, the first person to publish it, no one knew of the existence of the asteroid belt. Um, recently in the new se series made some um, headlines and the orbit of series goes through 2.8 AU. So the magic of Bode's, Bode's law is that it actually predicted the appearance of patterns which weren't there. On its own you could say well he was just making, he found a pattern which fit um, but the beauty of it is that he actually predicted the appearance of, of planets which is not known. So as much as you might want to um, put a question mark over it because of Venus, well, we have to account for Venus and its um, unusual, uh, unique um, rotation. And as we move out to Neptune, Bode's law fails at Neptune. However, we bring in here now we can see how the orbit of Pluto Pluto which is a Kuiper belt object not a planet actually passes inside of Neptune so a good part of Neptune's orbit it's actually further away from the Sun than what is Pluto Neptune is being affected by the Kuiper belt um, objects for one um, element so where Bode's fails Neptune, we have, it's a you know, very, of course, because it's, you know, basically touching inside the Kuiper belt. And Venus is the only, is the only legitimate flaw, but Venus revolves in the opposite direction. Something is very unusual about Venus. Um, so, yeah, okay, that's the, uh, the geometry of uh, Bode's Law and it's quite um, interesting and from being uh, an oddity which no one, which astronomy community didn't know what to quite make of it's now becoming moving into the mainstream as people look for exoplanets and especially planets in the Goldilocks zone. I uh, hope you enjoyed and found it informative. Thank you. Yo ya te hice dos años, creo que quiero